Hey, I'm Carbo, brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of M Carbo. Really excited to introduce the new Beretta 92FS, 92, 96 series, or M9 trigger spring kit for a great, fantastic, classic Beretta pistol. I actually had one of these issued to me when I was in the Army. They're great, love-hate relationship. One thing I didn't like was that really heavy trigger pull. That's for dang sure. 25% trigger pull reduction for these. Really impressed with it. There's a lot of options out there on the market right now, but this is very simple, straightforward, easy, effective, and safe trigger pull reduction. You're not gonna have any sort of light strikes or any sort of issues. Very simple, straightforward trigger return spring replacement, and that's it. And it's 25% trigger pull reduction. Really fantastic. Really excited to hear your results. Let's get on over to Tabletop, put this baby in. Before we get started, let's go ahead and check our firearms together, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well, this firearm's clear. Let's see what kind of factory double action trigger pull we're starting with. 10 pounds, 7.9 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Ten pounds, thirteen point five ounces. Now let's see what kind of single action trigger pull we're starting with. Four pounds, point three ounces. Three pounds, twelve point five ounces. Parts and tools needed for this build: Breda 92FS M9 9296 series trigger spring kit by M Carbo. This is a lighter custom trigger return spring. Your 5/16 Allen key, a 1/16 inch punch, a 3/32 inch punch, micro tip, flathead screwdriver, and a hammer. And as always, guys, make sure you're wearing eye pro. Let's begin by field stripping the pistols. Go ahead and hit the disassembly latch release button here, and then hit the disassembly latch as well. It'll eject that slide. You can see your whole slide assembly with your recoil spring guide on a barrel. We can set that aside for right now. We're gonna focus on replacing this trigger return spring right here. All right, so we're gonna get started by removing the slide stop first. There's a little spring right there. You can see the leg of it to the slide stop spring. All right, now you're gonna pull back on the slide stop. Take your flat tip. You're gonna go ahead and pull up on that little bend in the spring right there. So you'll pull up and then you'll shimmy that slide stop forward a little bit without damaging the spring, of course. All right, so there it is. Now we put it back together, this is how it's gonna be oriented. This short straight leg is gonna be captured in that channel right there. And obviously that little 90 degree bend is what's gonna be captured inside the frame. All right, just a handy little piece of information right there. We're gonna cover it again, obviously during reassembly. So we'll set it aside just like so. Try to make life as easy as possible on ourselves. Now we're about as far as we can go without removing the grips. So we'll go ahead and take our 564 Allen key and go ahead and remove these four grip screws two on either side. And you'll see there's a little locking washer in there, so make sure you keep those together with all the screws. All right, go ahead and pop that grip off. Set that aside. Now we're gonna flip over to the other side. All right, there's the last one. Okay, now go ahead and pop this grip off. Set that aside. Okay, now we can see the internal structure of the frame here. All right, this gives us all the working angles we need to look at here to make sure we do this correctly. Now we're gonna remove this trigger bar and trigger bar spring. You'll notice that the trigger bar has got a little cutout notch right there for that leg, that end of the trigger bar spring. It's good to pay attention to how this trigger bar is oriented. You'll see there's another notch cut out right down there in the frame for the other bend of the trigger bar spring. And then there's a leg here of the trigger bar spring that locates inside the frame. Very important critical details to recognize and pay attention to. So we're gonna pop that out. Comes out easy. Definitely don't wanna lose it. Take your time with it. All right, see how that's oriented. Set that aside. Now we can go ahead and remove our trigger bar as well. Something to take notice of. You'll notice there's the right side leg of the trigger return spring that locates on this pin that is attached to the trigger bar itself. So something else key to take notice of, the other, the left side leg of the trigger return spring locates down here on the frame. So we're gonna go ahead and pry out that trigger bar now. Just take your little micro tip and get behind it there. It'll come right out. All right, and that resistance 
is that little pocket right there that leg of the spring rests on. All right, set our trigger bar aside. Now we just need to tap out that trigger return spring pin and swap out those springs. Now you really don't even need your hammer and bench block for this operation, just your 3 seconds inch punch and you'll see there's an actual head on the pin on the left side. So we're going to push out from the right side, okay? And as we're pushing through, we're going to be capturing that center coil on that trigger return spring. We want to keep it captured. All right, so there's the actual trigger hinge pin there. Set that aside. Now we've still got our trigger return spring captured. So what we're going to do is put our thumb over that pocket there and just let it spring off. You can also turn it upright like so let it fall right out. You'll see that spring's wedged right in there. It locates in that bottom set of holes there, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and put the M-Carbo trigger return spring in there, which is a much lighter custom wound spring. We'll actually compare them together. And if you get them mixed up, you'll be able to tell quite easily the M-Carbo spring is like a silver, right? And the stock spring is like a dull kind of yellow. All right, so let's go ahead and just put them on this screwdriver, see how they do. So you got the M-Carbo spring on the inside, the stock spring here on the outside. It's pretty stiff. Oh, that's much lighter. All right, there we go. That is a good, okay, much lighter. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and put the M-Carbo spring in now. And what you want to do is orient it the same way what you want to do is orient it the same way. So this leg is on the actual right side, just like it was before. Now the trick to this is getting it in and lined up. So we've got it roughly staged for the moment inside the trigger, but we're gonna to have to do a lot more than that. All right, so what you'll do first is you're gonna take your 1 inch punch and from the left side of the frame, you're gonna actually get it right in there looking straight down those holes so that you can get it to grab that loop of the trigger return spring, all right? We're incrementally opening that hole so that we can put our trigger hinge pin in place. Now you'll take your 3 seconds inch punch and you're gonna push out the smaller punch, all right? Just a little handoff there. You can see how this is going together right here. So I can take my smaller punch and wiggle it around so that I can get that 3 seconds inch punch in there and get it captured, all right? That is the goal. There we go. Now take that trigger hinge pin and push out that 3 seconds inch punch. And it should all be centered up. It just makes life a lot easier than trying to just hammer away at it. So now we've got our new spring in place. Oh man, that is like butter. That's gonna be nice. That's how it needs to be. There's no reason to have that real heavy, stiff trigger return spring in there. It's gonna make it what it should. I really wish I had this spring when I was in the military because we use these, these were issued, you know, the M9. This is a pretty standard pistol. It, it, it is what it is. You know, it's a love-hate, a lot of us, I'm sure. Um, but hey, you guys requested this, so we're doing it. All right, so now we need to get our trigger bar in place. Just stage it first. So we're gonna drop it right into the top of that hole in the trigger. And then this other part of the linkage will drop right in as well. Now we don't wanna push it all the way in. You wanna leave that opening there. It's basically just hanging out ready staged for us to do something with it. Now take your flat tip screwdriver and you're going to pull up on that leg of that trigger return spring. Now pull forward on that trigger will help too, give you a little bit of a better vantage point. Once you get a bite of it, push forward. Then push your trigger bar in, all right, and it'll drop right into place. And you'll notice too, that leg of that trigger return spring is gonna drop right on that pin of the trigger bar. Now we need to go ahead and put some tension on that trigger bar. So we'll take our trigger bar spring, all right? We're gonna drop that leg right there into that pocket on the frame, right? You can see we've got our loop right here. That's gonna drop into the frame, okay? There's two out of three. Now we'll go ahead and take this curve here on the trigger return spring and drop it right into the trigger bar. All right, then just go ahead and check the tension to make sure we're good to go. Awesome. Now take your slide stop and your slide stop spring. Remember how they orient, that little short leg right there resting on that notch cutout. 
and then the 90 degree bend right underneath it like so. So that 90 degree bend is going to locate right into that pocket on the frame and then you'll just pivot it around and get it to drop right in that hole, push up, and get it to locate right in place. There we go. And you'll also notice that little leg is going over top of that trigger hinge pin there. Now go ahead and grab your left side grip, drop it right in place. All right, hear that little snap, that's a good sign. Then take your grip screws with the little lock washer on it, drop it right in, and your 564 Allen key and tighten them right up. Same. Go ahead and make sure they're snug. All right, now flip it on over and do the other side. Right side grip, snaps right in place. Then take your grip screws with the lock washer on it. Interested to hear what you guys think about some upgraded grip screws for the Beretta. Definitely some cheap screws that come from the factory. We could do something out of stainless steel, with some sort of black coating to make it all match and look good. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so we're all back together here. All right, now we can go ahead and put the slide back on. Go ahead and push back till the slide is just past that edge of the frame there and push on the disassembly latch. It'll lock right in place. Check to make sure it's locked in place. There we go. All right, now quick function check. Just check that slide lock. Good. Now go ahead and check the safety. Good. Drops his hammer. Now go ahead and put it on fire. Pull the trigger. Whoo! Nice. Now check the double action. There we go. That's beautiful. Much better. Let's go ahead and check this trigger pull. All right, let's see what kind of modified double action trigger pull we get. Remember, we were in the 10 pound range before. There we go. Eight pounds, 11.5 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Seven pounds, 13 ounces. Nice. Now let's see what kind of single action trigger pull we get. Two pounds, 10.9 ounces. Very nice. Let's take one more to confirm. Two pounds, 11.6 ounces. Beautiful. That is absolutely fantastic. So we were at about a four pound single action trigger pull before. Now we're at a high twos. So we dropped about a pound and some change right there, which is perfect. That feels nice and really hardly any effort. I mean, that was simple, straightforward. You didn't have to rip this whole thing apart. Anybody could do this in about 10, 15 minutes at home. Down from 10 pounds to eight pounds on the double action trigger pull. Still fairly heavy, but not bad, really. I mean, much more manageable than it was. And on the single action from four pounds down to nice, clean two and three quarter pounds, phenomenal, really phenomenal. The single action feels really impressive. I like that way better than what it was. It was really just terrible before. That's a really nice, smooth, clean trigger pull on single action. Double action is still fairly, fairly heavy, but still manageable, not that bad, really. So if this is something that obviously is your primary or your favorite to shoot, I would highly recommend doing this. Very simple, easy, straightforward improvement. It's a simple trigger return spring replacement, which makes a heck of a difference. So it's worth it. 15 minutes of your time. 15 bucks, there you go. 25% trigger pull reduction, much more enjoyable pistol to shoot, which is exactly what we're going for here. So really impressed guys. Thank you very much, M Carbo Brotherhood for your ideas and your support. And as always, happy shooting.